Okay, so I'm back and in the last tutorial I showed you how to get a spreadsheet into Unreal, how to create a structure and how to access that data. And this is where we left off. And now I'm gonna show you how you could display this information one row at a time to a user or a player. So there's a few steps involved with this, but it's not terribly complicated. So what we're gonna do is I'm just going to create a user widget first. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to user widget and I'll just leave it called New Widget Blueprint. Double click into it. And the first thing we're going to do is get an overlay and drag that onto the scene like that. We can make sure that it's 1920 by 1080 if you want. And just reposition it and zoom in a little bit. Then I'm going to search for something called a stack box. I'm just going to drag it down here on the overlay. And then we're going to search for two texts right here. Drag one and drag to and the first text block I'm just gonna call this name and I want it as a variable and the second one I'm gonna call this characteristics or cars for short my stack box is going horizontally and I want it to go vertically so I'm just gonna set it to vertical and I'm gonna center it and then there's some padding in here that we could apply to the top if I click on the text block go to padding I can go ahead and bring that down maybe like 20 or something like that and then the same thing for the other just so that there's some room between them like that and then I'm going to go back into the content level I'm going to right click I'm going to go to blueprint blueprint interface and I'm going to double click on it and I'm going to compile that and then we'll just leave everything called the default on inputs I'm going to name this first one title and I just let me pull this out here a little bit and I'm going to change this to a text variable then I'm going to go ahead and add one more variable and I'm just going to call this cars for characteristics and then we'll compile and save that then we're going to jump back into our new widget blueprint right here go to the graph we're going to get rid of these nodes because we don't need them. And we're going to go up to class settings and we're going to implement that user interface we just made. So implement interfaces and we'll go to the new, it's called new interface, I believe, right there. And once it comes in over here, we can just double click on it, compile and save. Oh, one thing I forgot, I see I didn't set this to a variable compile and save that and the, once they're set to a variable you'll see them over here then all we have to do for this is just drag off here get cars get name and what we'll do is let me move this around a little bit move these down here and on one on name I'm going to drag set text here like that and we're going to drag I called it title, but here we'll set text. Set text here. And here this will go into there. I'll pull this up a little bit. That'll go down into there. And that's all we have to do. So we'll compile and save. So this should take care of our display. Now we'll go back into my new blueprint and this is where the rest of our work will take place. So I'm gonna delete these two nodes because I don't need them. Up here on Event Begin Play, we're gonna create our widget. So I'm just gonna go create widget, create widget. And we're gonna tie this to our new widget blueprint, like right there. And then simply drag off of here and add to viewport to viewport right there and that takes care of our widget interface. Now here's the part that's a little more involved than you might think it is but what we want to be able to do is cycle through our array one at a time and we're going to do that by creating a variable that we call current index. So it took a while for me to get my mind around this. Okay so current index and it's an integer and we can open it up if we want compile and save it by default it'll be set to zero 
So the first thing we're going to do is go get, and let me zoom in here. We don't need this details panel, so let me go ahead and close that. So the first thing I want to do is get this here and plug it into here. And then we're going to be doing some, some logic here. What we're going to be doing is cycling through this array. So we're going to, there's only five elements in there, so it's going to go from zero to four. And then once it gets to the max array, the last index value, which is going to be four, it's going to reset to zero and cycle back through. So this will allow our player to basically loop through our data one element at a time. So to do that, what we really need is the length of the array. So we're going to drag off of here and get the length should be here, right here. And to make our everything line up, we need to subtract one from this. So we're going to pull off of here and go subtract. Subtract one. All right. And then that is that. And then what we're going to do is we want to get a branch node. We're checking for when we're at the end of the array value, when we hit the last array value, because at that point it needs to reset. So we're going to set a branch node up here, B, and this is actually going to be our, our test condition that we're building right here. So we're going to take one off of our length, and then what we're going to do is search for greater than or equal to. We'll get our current array value here and plug this in to, do I have this right? This goes into here, yeah, sorry about that. So we have our length that we're gonna take one off of it and then our current array. This is basically checking to see when we get to our last index value. And that's gonna be our test condition. And as long as we haven't hit the end of the array, the last array, we want it to the current index to keep incrementing by one. So we got to get the current index value again. And then we're going to search for drag off of here and go add. And then we're going to, I believe we're going to set this again. Yeah, we're going to set this. So we can drag this again and go set. So this is going to go in here like that. And this is going to be driven off of this not being true so well there's one thing i need to do first before i do that let me push this out a little bit more and push this down because we need to we need to update our interface so what we're going to do is now search for a new interface new interface right here and then this will plug in here this is kind of cool how this all works but it is a little tricky so we want the name in the title and the characteristics in the characteristics and our target here is our widget blueprint so we got to pop that in there and then this plugs in here and then the last thing we do is at the moment that we hit the last array value we I can just copy this node control D we just want to reset it to zero so we can loop back in loop back through our loop so it's that's the whole thing <laughs> so I see a lot of people doing tutorials and they just plug in random and I see why they do it because if you're not doing that what are you doing well you're gonna have to cycle through <laughs> and it's a little bit more work so I can see why people skip and just plug in random all the time anyway we'll compile and save this and that should be it so all I have to do is drag this onto the scene and let me just kind of zoom down here and I can stretch this out a little bit so what should happen is every time I walk through this trigger box you should see the data appear on the screen one at a time and then it'll loop back through so there's oh so let me go to the new interface I see not the new my new widget blueprint I see on the designer uh, the text block is still here so I want to I want to clear that out. Delete and delete. Okay, let's compile and save that. Okay, so let's try that again. Okay, let's see what happens. Blue sector, dangerous, lots of activity. 
but it's up there. It shouldn't be random. Now, why isn't it not incrementing? So that's the first one. I must have done something wrong. Let's go see what I did wrong. Data table. Let's subtract one. Oh, I didn't increment it. Sorry about that. I apologize. So let's go ahead and do that again. There is a little, a lot of little things you can miss. So, okay, so let's see what happens. So blue sector, dangerous, lots of activity. Green sector, all clear. Red sector, yellow sector, violet sector. And then it should start looping again. So it's pretty cool, huh? So like you could use this for some kind of flashcard system too because you could put a lot of data and then you're getting data from a spreadsheet to start it. So anyway, I hope you found this helpful. Take care. Have a great day and I'll talk to you next time.